Hello everyone. Welcome to the ninth lecture of the course Statistical Thermodynamics. The topic of this lecture is a review of classical thermodynamics, specifically the idea of entropy. In the previous lecture on the Carnot cycle, towards the beginning, I mentioned that studying the Carnot cycle is important for two reasons. The first is that it provides an upper limit for the efficiency of a heat engine. The second reason is that it suggests the idea of entropy. I have discussed the efficiency part in the previous lecture and will now talk about how the idea of entropy emerges from the Carnot cycle. Our discussion will build on the previous lecture so please watch that first in case you have not done that already. Recall that the Carnot cycle is a thermodynamic cycle involving an ideal gas, the net effect of which is to convert heat flowing into the system into work. We have seen that all the heat flowing in cannot be converted into work and there is a well-defined upper limit of how much of it can be done. The Carnot cycle can be represented on the PV diagram like this. The cycle starts with the ideal gas at this point here on the PV diagram. The first step is an isothermal expansion of the gas. The second step is an adiabatic expansion which cools it and brings it to a lower temperature. The third step is an isothermal compression and the final step is an adiabatic compression which returns the gas to its initial state. All the processes here are quasi-static processes. Let me denote these four stages of the process as stage A, stage B, stage C and stage D because I am going to use this notation in the discussion that will follow. We have derived in the previous lecture that the ratio of the heat absorbed during the expansion step to the heat released during the compression step is equal to the ratio of the temperatures at which these heats are exchanged. So we have derived QH by QC and these are absolute values is equal to TH by TC. If we incorporate the sign convention that heat flowing into the system is positive, then this is actually QH by QC is equal to minus TH by TC. Writing this differently, this becomes QH by TH plus QC by TC is equal to 0. If we consider all four stages of the cycle and denote the heat absorbed during that step by these labels A, B, C and D, then we get QA by T of A in the first step plus QB divided by T of B which is 0 for the second step plus QC by T of C for the third step plus 0 for the fourth step is equal to 0. This can be written in the following way to emphasize what we are trying to get at as sum over all the stages of the process QI by TI is equal to 0. Here QI is the reversible heat input to the system during the stage I. 
in a cycle the system returns to its original state and then the internal energy returns to its original value if we add up the heat input to the system in each stage so here qh and qc then that is not zero but we notice here that if we add the reversible heat input weighted by 1 by t that is zero we can show that this result is true for any reversible cycle for example consider the cycle shown here the cycle can always be divided into strips representing a number of carnot cycles like this and all the heats flowing into and leaving the system will follow an equation like this if we make the strips of the carnot cycle infinitesimally small then in the limit this equation becomes an integral over the cycle delta q reversible which is the heat absorbed at every stage divided by t is equal to 0 adding up the delta q reversible by t in a cycle gives 0 that is there is no net change of delta q reversible by t when the system returns to its original state this suggests that there is a new state function or a new property whose changes are given by q reversible by t we call this new property as entropy and denote it as s so this term here is a is the change in entropy ds we still don't know what this s means all we know is that it is a state function that is it is a property of the system and its changes are given by delta q reversible by t since it's a new property of the system it needs to be explored to understand what it tells us about the system and that is exactly what we will do first let us get some practice in calculating the change in entropy for a couple of processes the first process for which we will calculate change in entropy is the isothermal expansion of an ideal gas from p1 v1 to p2 v2 the change in entropy delta s is equal to the sum of the heat absorbed divided by t during this process and since all the heat is absorbed at the same temperature for an isothermal reversible process this becomes q reversible by t we have seen that for an isothermal process the change in internal energy is zero so q reversible is minus w so q reversible is the negative of the work done which is equal to n r t ln v2 by v1 and this is divided by t so the change in entropy in this process is nr ln v2 by v1 let us calculate the change in entropy for going from the point p1 v1 t 
to P2 V2T by using a different reversible path. Since entropy is a state function, the change in entropy should be independent of the path. Let us check. So on the PV diagram, the isothermal path which we have considered already is something like this P1 V1 T to P2 V2 T and we have calculated the change in entropy for this path. Now let us consider a different path where we go isochorically like this first and then isobarically like that. The temperature at this intermediate point is let's say T prime. The volume here is V1 and the pressure is P2. The change in entropy taking this alternate path is delta S is equal to delta S for step 1 plus delta S for step 2 that is equal to integral dq reversible by t for step 1 plus dq reversible by t for step 2. The first step here is an isochoric or constant volume process so the heat absorbed is n c v d t by t and this is integrated from temperature t to t prime as shown in the figure here and in, and in step 2 the heat absorbed is n c p d t because this is a constant pressure process divided by t integral from t prime to t. Now writing Cp as Cv plus r and evaluating the integrals this becomes n Cv ln t prime by t plus n Cv ln t by t prime plus r ln t by t prime. We notice that the first two terms here this one and this one are opposite of each other and they cancel out. So delta s is equal to r ln t by t prime. We want to write T prime which is the temperature at this intermediate point in terms of the known variables. We recognize that in this constant pressure expansion V1 by T prime is equal to V2 by T. So P by T prime is V2 by V1. Substituting this expression for T by T prime in the change in entropy expression here, we get the change in entropy delta S is equal to R ln V2 by V1, which is exactly what we had got before. So the change in entropy is independent of what reversible path we have followed to calculate it. The change in entropy depends only on the initial and the final equilibrium states of the system. Let us now work through one more example. Let us calculate the change in entropy when a body is heated to increase its temperature. So calculate
Following the definition of the change in entropy, which is dq reversible by t, and integrating along the entire path, we get delta s is equal to integral from t1 to t2, dq reversible, which is m c dt by t, m is the mass, c is the specific heat, and on integrating, this becomes m c ln t2 by t1. Note that to calculate the change in entropy, it is necessary to calculate the change in entropy at every infinite decimal step and integrate it because at each step the temperature is different. Heat is being absorbed quasi statically so there is a new temperature at each stage as the object is getting heated and the change in entropy during that small step is mc dt by t and when we integrate this through the entire temperature range we get the total change in entropy for this process. We have seen in this lecture that there exists a new system property called entropy whose changes we know how to calculate. But we still don't know what this property tells us about the system. In the next lecture, we will discuss the second law of thermodynamics, where we will see that this property plays a crucial and universal role in our understanding of transformations happening in nature. See you for that.